Hello, and welcome back. We're taking a look at understanding totality. What else? Understanding totality today. And as always, with the study and practice of this course, it's important to recognize that all of the complexity that seems to surround us that we identify with, that appears to exist here in the world, all of it is our own making. And each and every seemingly individual component of this complex web is completely unnecessary. Truth is beyond all of this all of the drama, all of the running around in circles and everything that we call life here in the world. Truth is untouched by this, and it simply is and has always been. We have only to recognize it. So we'll talk in a little bit more detail about this, but it's an important backdrop because we make all of the drama. We made it up. We made up all of the complications and we continue to make further complications and draw further boundaries where there, in fact, are no boundaries, but we make them up. We make up the contours of nation states and divisions within those nation states. We make up all kinds of things to keep us, so we think, separate from our brother, to keep us identifying with ourselves as the reflection that you see in the mirror, a human being an individual self-sustaining survival unit. Reality is far different. And here in the study of A Course in Miracles, and indeed in spirituality in general, no matter what the outward form may take in the world, there are many doors, but the statements of truth are very simple. Our inner teacher is pointing us back home, so to speak, with the message that we've never left our source. Ideas leave not their source. Yet here, while we appear to be on a journey, we have the study and practice of this material. And the basic ideas are very simple. They're so simple, they escape our understanding. And we think that these simple ideas somehow comprise some great mystery. What mystery? Truth, of course, is beyond words, our reality as one with God, is beyond all words, including the statement that we're one with God, including the two-word and just two-syllable statement, God is. That is as simple and as close as we can come in words, unless you want to just say one oneness. Simple ideas. And as we run off doing our thing here in the world, this sheer simplicity, the sheer simplicity of truth eludes our grasp entirely. So I thank you for returning to this video, to your practice, to your study of this course. Whatever that actually looks like for you, it's very important that we 
take the time out, a few minutes out of our day, to turn our awareness back to where it really belongs. To just for a little while, give up all of the drama of our email and our social media feed and everything else that just kind of flies at us in life. It's important to take these moments out and really recommit to your practice. Notice I say recommit because we make a commitment once and we discover, well, that's not enough. We have to continue to side for God instead of the ego again and again and again because our stuff comes up, our drama. We get carried away in the judgment and blaming game. And for you, that might not happen for several hours today, but it may be happening for you right now. So it's important to take this time out. As we wrap up this section of the text, chapter 7, section 7, the totality of the kingdom, Jesus invites us to understand totally by understanding totality. Mm. That's where the title of this video came from. Understand totally, 100%, completely, by understanding totality. God is. You are the will of God. You ever think of yourself that way, as the will of God? I invite you to think about that, to read it and reread it here in the text. As many times as you feel you're called to read it. And to really let that sink in. You are the will of God. And I invite you to take some time thinking about what that really means. And if you're not sure, ask your inner teacher to show you. Ask your inner teacher to show you what that means. And the words that you'll hear are your own. Let's highlight your inner teacher is inner, part of your mind. When the profound nature of this truly begins to sink in, it's pretty amazing. That's the best word that I can think of, really, to describe it. You are the will of God, so you're invited to acknowledge that and to see love everywhere because it is everywhere. God is. If you've never encountered that statement before, you'll encounter it throughout this course, and you will especially run into it here on this series of videos. God is. What's implicit is that only God is. Nothing else is. There is only God. Now, God does not exist separately from you because there is no separation of any kind. There is only God. And God doesn't do separate little individual nation states. He does not do categories levels of worthiness, levels of anything. There are no separate component parts. Nothing is parsed out and sliced and subdivided. Everything is completely whole and one. You are part of this oneness, 
not an individual component separate part, but one with it. You are the will of God. We are one. We are. You are. Your worst enemy is one with God. And in casting somebody as your worst enemy, you simply don't acknowledge this oneness, not yet. You certainly will. And when you do is largely up to you and the forgiveness work that you choose to do in this lifetime under the guidance of your inner teacher, who will tell you what to think, who will tell you what to do and what to say, and what to type in a chat box if it comes to that. Anything. God is, includes you, includes your brother in this totality. There is no separation of any kind. This perceived separation from God is a simple mistake. It never took place. It's impossible. Wholeness can't be sliced apart and divided into billions of individual component parts. It's not possible. And let's all be glad about that. It means that while we see ourselves as on a journey, which we call a spiritual journey or a walk or a path or whatever, whatever you want to sprint marathon, I don't know, a couple laps around the track, whatever you want to call it. While we appear to be on a journey, it means we have a home to go back to, which as we discover along the way, we've never left. So we understand totally by understanding totality. When you perceive one part of the ego's thought system, the thought system of separation, when you perceive one part of that as completely insane, you are correctly evaluating all of it. Insane, non-existent, a simple mistake. Total illusion. Made up and wholly and completely unnecessary. When you judge one portion of the ego's thought system in that way, you have correctly evaluated the whole. Now, similarly, when you perceive even one brother, one part of the kingdom of God as whole, as truly loving, worthy, loving, as one with God himself, when you perceive one brother that way, you're perceiving all of us that way. It's powerful. Why are you perceiving all of us that way? If you perceive one brother that way, there is just oneness. There is no separate other. So it's one of those ideas that is a simple idea in statement, isn't it? There is no separation of any kind. So what then do you do when your entire reality and everything that you see and taste, touch, feel, hear, smell in this world says otherwise? That there is multiplicity and everything's a separate parsed out component part. What do you mean oneness? If you're hearing that voice, understand that is indeed the voice of the ego that wishes to be preserved in your mind and to capture your attention. So here comes one shiny object after another or one attack thought. You could wish to attack the image on your screen or any other teacher of this course or anything in spirituality. The ego would like you to believe that all of this is a waste of your time, but you know what the true waste of your time is, or you wouldn't be here. Uh, we know this deep down, we know this. So when you feel something hit, when it just lands on, perhaps on an intuitive gut level, 
that you're not quite able to pinpoint or articulate in words, and perhaps you are. Fabulous. But if you're not, that's okay too. It's your inner teacher speaking to you. When this lands, when there's an aha moment in this video, and something that I've said or am going to say, that's your inner teacher urging you on. That's the call to awaken that you're hearing. So it would be very beautiful and very kind of you to answer that call. And what can you do about the chatterbox voice of the ego that wants you to get hooked away into your social media feed and blame and judge and all of the stuff that everybody else is doing on there because they can. <laughs> they have a forum given to them, a worldwide forum to spread BS and hatred. That forum actually can be used to spread love and to share the Holy Spirit with your brother just as easily as it can to go off on a rant, can't it? Right. This is a very good example of how we can change our mind in the present moment. We can choose the thought system of the Holy Spirit. We could choose love instead of fear. We could choose the Holy Spirit instead of the ego. This is what we're invited to do again and again and again. And as many times as we get carried away by all the psychodrama out there, we bring our awareness back to the practical work of forgiving the Son of God. So when you hear this ego voice that wants to tell you this is complete crap, reality is really not that simple. It's really complicated and multifaceted, remember? Remember? Well, you can simply forgive that voice. It's a simple mistake. Reality is not complicated. We make all of the complications ourselves. And when we side with the ego, when we see ourselves as an individual self-sustaining survival unit and all of our brothers as separate, plural, individual self-sustaining survival units rather than one with us, your brother is you, in fact, when we see ourselves as separate, then this voice just grows stronger. And it's what we're used to in the world, which is why these ideas can seem so radical. They indeed can, especially at first, seem incredibly far-fetched and too simple that we tell ourselves that's too good to be true. Reality can't be like that. It's going to be more like this. Yeah. No. <laughs> you, you could choose to see it differently. And that's the invitation that goes out to all of us here. So to the extent that this material brings up questions, I definitely, definitely welcome those here. I offer this video series several times a week as a teaching aid, as a supplement. So these discussions are meant to supplement your learning and your understanding that you do with your inner teacher, whether you're going through the workbook for students or the text or the manual for teachers, or whether you're just revisiting this material or checking it out for the first time. There's a reason that you're here today and your inner teacher is speaking to you and because you've watched to the end of this video and we're almost at the end, it means you're answering the call. And for that, I thank you. And it's not just me that thanks you for watching this channel and subscribing and all of that stuff. By the way, if you haven't subscribed yet, here's the subscription button. It's the red arrow. Click that, we'd love to have you. But apart from all of that, what matters most is that you're answering the call. So to the extent that this deep practice of self-inquiry raises questions, which it most definitely should, then I invite you to ask them here. And even if you want to simply type hello in the comments, we'd love to have you. And thank you for joining me for your dedication and commitment to practice, which is in fact, the highest form of offering you could make anyone, anywhere, anytime. 
no exceptions. Yeah. It's, it's very, very important. So thank you for joining me and I will see you again very soon.